I saw? I saw DeWitt. Did I tell you I saw him? Yeah, I see that little creep. Was he married? No. Yeah, he's getting married. Really? He's getting married to that woman that he was home with a couple of years ago. Wow. In the good old days. A long time thing. Mm. Those good old days, huh? Shit. Um, Cheryl had another baby. You tell me. They all have <laughs> kids. Which is nice. I think it's nice. <laughs> Joyce looks like her, but she's not. Mm. Is she really big now? She's gigantic. Uh, oh, well. So anyway, what's been happening these days? Hey, nothing much. Just going to school. Just trying to make it. Seems like it's a lifetime ambition, trying to get oneself together, but... I mean, if I had it to do all over again, I'd do it all the, the same, same way. But I mean, I just... You know, I'm past that. Look at all these teachers, they're all fine. There's Mr. Toomey, old fat Toomey. I hated him. I can't believe these people. Oh, there he is. Mr. Conjoint. God. He wouldn't remember you if you if you wanted him to this. <gasps> this is the one that used to Oh, Louise, Louise. Okay, oh, God, she's still... no, no, she's married. Oh, I thought you might still be here. No. There she is, Miss Schultz. That oh, was she was teacher. a bitch. That was my favorite teacher. Everybody hates her, but I love Miss Schultz. She was my favorite. I don't know if she'd remember me, though. Anything, I don't know, like going to high school, to me, was like a being waste. in prison. Yeah, a total waste yeah. of time. There was nothing in that school situation that would put me where my head was at at the time. And I was really into science and, and, and drama and dance. And they didn't have anything. It was either you took the college course or you took the business course or home economics. Home and we were all in there. I mean, where do you go with the home economics degree? You know, you cook all day and you learn dance, how to sew. cook, and fried and that's chicken. that's not where my head, you know, I wasn't that kind of a person. Upward bound. <laughs> I mean, I walked in there. I was this nice little kid. And next thing you know, people gave me this power. And it went to my head. Actually, you were out and out obnoxious. Yeah. Obnoxious. That's what it was. Upward Bound was um, the program run by Harvard. And it was geared towards the student that had, like, the mental intelligence to succeed, but were, you know, like, uh, diso uh, very disillusioned by the whole um, regular school system. And, you know, like, they would give you all these kind of IQ tests, and you'd come out really on top. And they couldn't understand why you were bringing home 32s for marks. Wasn't that, it, you know, like, because, like, it was more or less the type of kids like me went into marks. I didn't give a damn if I got a 32. You know, it was like my brothers and sisters would run home with A's and compare them, and I'd come in with my 50s and think I was super bad, you know. Like, I outfoxed the fox. But also, Upward Bound was to show you other things in yeah, life, cultural, also, cultural yeah. things. And the see, we all hated surprise. that. You know, here we are. We're from, like, the inner city, and they used to like to take us to plays and, operas, you know, operas and, and you know, ballets and all, you know, all that kind of stuff. Cultural things of life. And what we used to, we used to go to those places, but we used to vandalize them or terrorize everybody. You know, <laughs> they'd take us to, you know, to see, where, you know, like, we went to a play, I remember, in, in Connecticut. They had that yeah, Shakespearean festival. Yeah, it was the Shakespearean festival. Right. And we... You know, nobody's interested. Here out. it is, like, you know, a warm summer day. You know, you could be out in the streets, you know, drinking, drinking or, you or know, doing whatever, you know. Have, and, and they take us to a play. So here we all are, 60 kids. Remember oh, Billy, man. Yeah. Billy fell asleep. Billy, yeah, that's right. Snoring back in the, the, the main scene of Hamlet, taking his life. <laughs> it is Big Billy. Scene, and Billy and Mr. Bud nudges him and Billy goes, well, what? What the hell's the matter around here? <laughs> I, and everybody, even Hamlet, stopped and looked to see what was going on. I mean, that's the type of crowd we were, and we didn't care. Then after high school, I didn't know what I was going to do. I got this really job being a clerk, and um, it, 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 was, it was just a terrible job. And I did that for the summer, and through Upward Bound, they, they told me about this place called, you know, Educational Workshop, and somebody was recruiting, you know, people for 
Marlboro College. And I said, well, you know, I have nothing to lose, nothing to gain, so I'll check it out. You know, it was a very nice bus trip and they paid for it. I got lunch and dinner and next week I got a letter saying that I was going to be accepted with like full scholarship. So I went and it was really, really hard because for the first time I found out that I had to study and I didn't know how to study. I had no discipline in it. But once I got into it, I could really do it. But it was a very lonely school. It was like on top of a mountain. There were like 275 people and two blacks. And um, I was a, you know, represented the whole black race. And I was into sociology and education. And being at that school, you couldn't because we were on top of a mountain. And how can you, you know, be into social things and be with 200 select people? And, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, carry all the weight. So I left and I, you know, I dropped out of school. And then I got a job at John Hancock. And I worked there for about a year and a half two years and it was the worst two years of my whole life I was just working to pay rent and not doing anything I just felt totally disillusioned with my whole life and didn't know what to do how I could correct it so I just worked there and worked there and worked there <laughs> I had I can think back thinking how I'd never get married I'd never have any kids I mean that that was just like a uh, a whole trip to even think in those terms. When I used to babysit, I'd want to kill the kids that I babysit for. It was, you know, monsters as far as I was concerned. I used to do little mean things like um, stick my tongue out at them or pinch them and tell them, like, tell your mother, I don't care. You know, like I just was, you know, that wasn't my bag at all. And, um, you know, just looking at my sister, she was married, she had a kid, she didn't do anything. She sat home, she took care of her. That was the big deal. Then she'd have to beg me to come and babysit or one of my other sisters. And I could not see myself in this situation. So finally I ended up meeting my husband, uh, Jerome. And when I ever found out that he was like a musician, I just like got totally uh, excited. So that was just love right there. <laughs> About six, seven months later, I was pregnant. I decided, well, I, I'm gonna have to drop out of school. I can't be his woman without dropping out of school. And the next thing you know, I found myself running around asking my friends, you know, like, will you be a bridesmaid? You know, we're going to have this African wedding. It went on the rocks. <laughs> it, like, we just fell out, like, shortly after I had my second child. <laughs> You're not going to dance? Hmm? <laughs> You gonna dance? No. Oh. Where's your brothers? Oh, you gotta have your jug. Get the juice. There you go. Ah, <coughs> oh, you got a cold. Now you wanna dance. Hooray! <laughs> uh -huh. Hooray! Hooray! Hi. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Last night's gourmet. Does she like pick pickles and milk? You're huh? not pregnant, are you? <laughs> she better not have been. I want to know the bum that did it. <laughs> She's a picker? Yeah. Oh! That's the first great dive into independence. Yeah. The fingers no, jump. All, all right. Sit. <laughs> Heel. <laughs> Come on, sit down. All right, and don't put it on your head, because that's, that's going to be curtain. Miss? Miss? Ma'am? Ma'am? <laughs> Miss? All right. Can I have some? This is the fun. This is the life. I recommend it to all you single women. <laughs> no, I tell you right now, if I had to stay in the house, like a lot of those girls do, boy, just sitting home, I'd go crazy. Because after a while, you lose all your, you know, like all your you know, vicious feelings or whatever. I don't know, you lose something sitting in the house. I just know the maternity leave was a killer. I, every day I call work and say, you sure you don't want me to come <laughs> I'd beg them. I can't be still. They couldn't stand me in here long. Yes. 
past the few hours that we're together. <laughs> yeah, have a seat. I mean, it's like when I have to stay home with them, like on a vacation, I can say, you know, I enjoy myself because I know school is coming back. Right. My life is coming back. You know, because once you start losing sight of you, you can hang yourself up. Yeah. And you know I'm never going to lose me. <laughs> I love him and all that, but if I lose me, I'm going to no, love nobody. Right? Yep. Too much uh, if I had three kids at once, triplets, right? I think I would die or go back to my Were mother's. Really? <laughs> I'd go to my Jamal, mother's. Jamal, um, are you eating your food? I do. I hope to have kids someday, but not now. I'm not ready. Yeah, I'm not ready. Okay, you want to get that back? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, you can have it. Yeah, you're ready. 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 I know, that's why we both laughed at the altar. Yeah. Well, the joke was on me. <laughs> Who else's grill is this? Who else had a grill? Pat, you had a grill? Here it is. You know, they have a uh, contest here <laughs> for the all-American team to see who's the fastest uh, waitress in the state. McDonald's is the type of place, if you're a high school kid that needs pocket change, it's fine. Maybe even if you're a mother that is, you know, home and wants something to do while the kids are at school, terrific. And you know, like without a diploma, I mean, where else do you go? <laughs> you know, I'm, I've always been great gonna. I mean, I'm always gonna do something. And I mean, you know, I'm the biggest gonna running running around till finally one day i mean i just looked in the mirror and i said listen you're gonna do it it's not gonna be any more gunners but i'm gonna do it it's gonna now become a reality and no longer be a fantasy of going back and getting my high school diploma come on come on come on Feel, you know, it, felt, it feels funny, like every morning I leave the house and we're all going to school and, and they're looking at me saying, you're going to school. You know, when you're going to work, it's hard for a kid to relate to, but this way it was just so much nicer to think my mommy's going to school. They, it was like they felt proud, you know, and I'd always let them feel that they were doing something for me. And in the end, it'd be for them. The nicest thing was that I have, you know, a, a daycare mother right across the street. Jerry is like, the best thing that ever happened in terms of being able to leave a young child with someone. She's just terrific. You're going to say hi. You're going to say hi to me every morning. I'm not going to say hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm going to say something. Sometimes at 7 o'clock, the meeting. The kids, they're supported by aid for dependent children. Like if you're going back to school and trying to become self-supporting and doing something with your life, you know, they pick up the tab of their daycare. You know, it's hard every morning to, um, you know, get out there and go to school, drop your kids off all different directions, but it's worth it. And it makes you more comfortable going out there every day, dealing with that daily struggle. Jamal and Jerome, wait a minute. Hold my hand, because I, I might fall, so. <laughs> you hold me up. See? Jamal is at the International Daycare Center, which is a parent-run daycare center, and Jerome goes to a public school, like, right next door, which I feel, you know, it's like both things go hand in hand. Hello, okay. Jamal. See, look who's here, Renee. Come on, tell him for me, please. Come on, now you can take off your coat. Now he doesn't want to take off his coat. Come on, put your jacket on. You got school today? Yeah. Now? I got an exam. And <laughs> what? And uh, physiology. Did you study? Of course, until 4 o'clock this morning. Are you about as bad as I am? Yeah, I can't even see right now, actually. I'm going Jump, 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 jump. Why are you doing this? Why can't you just say goodbye? Goodbye. I'll see you. <laughs> Did you see him? Okay, bye bye. Bye. Why don't you say bye? Bye tomorrow.
Bye, Jamal. You taking the trash can? So, oh, I'll see you. I gotta go. Bye bye. I mean, just the fact of falling behind 16-year-olds in my mocks and my studies was just too much for me to handle. So I'd find myself at night working until 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning trying to get my studies together so that I'd at least come out of it with a B. You know, and luckily, you know, I found this private high school, Shaw Prep, and um, wangled my way into a scholarship which was on time. I mean, there were other options and they just weren't for me. And the purpose of going there was to get back into the whole ritual of studying and... Problem on the board? Yeah, I will. Okay. Which one are you going to do for us? Um, give me one to do. One fourteen, some fractions. They're all the same denominator. Oh, you're funny. Well, let's take your time. Okay. Negative. And, uh, uh they're both five. negative, so you're just adding, right? Yeah, five fourths. Right, exactly. Now, you, you don't have any fraction to worry about, really, now. And you have two numbers you're adding. One's positive, one's, one's negative. negative, so you... You just you take care of the whole sum, numbers, right? Yeah, of the greater number. So that ends up being five. Okay. And five fourths. Right, and what's the sign going to be? Negative. negative, exactly. Great. Oh, you shouldn't erase it that quick. Oh. <laughs> so people can look at it. Oh, did anybody want to look at that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your name? Claret Prince. C-L-O. R-A-E. Okay. Okay. Finish. Bring it back to me, and I'll let you see. Are you going to see Sandra or Alice? Alice. Alice Dunwoody now? Oh, okay. No, Sandra. Okay, you can Sandra, fill it out together right. over there. Okay. When is incorporated? It says you were referred to winners through a pamphlet. Do you know much about winners? No, I just went through it and I, you know, it kind of said it was, you know, to help. Are you tired of clicking through the commercials? Watch Commercial Free on Patreon. The link is below this video in the description box. And now back to the show. You touch Women, you yeah. know, like that going back to school or doing whatever they want to do, you know. Okay. When I first, uh, you know, thought about going back to school, it all stemmed from when I dropped out of school. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I got married and that whole thing and had a couple of kids and figured, you know, what would I need, you know, any more education for <laughs> other than to be a housewife. And then I ended up finding myself doing more than just being a housewife, like working, you know, uh, kind of being the breadwinner. And like I had no, you know, no real skills mm -hmm. other than conversation, <laughs> you know. Right. Okay. What I'd like to know now, I see that your education and career objective is nursing. But was it because of the flexible hours, or did you consider any other career? You know, oh yeah, I've considered other careers, but nursing, something I, you know, I have a lot of friends that are nurses, and one and one friend that sticks in my mind more than anything is cello who's been a nurse at Mass General for years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like just watching her, I used to go and stay with her at the hospital all day. You know, just hanging around in between breaks when she'd have a cup of coffee. I'd oh, just sit really? like in just, the back Just to just see what out. it was about. So like you've explored yeah. your career. Probably. Or community yeah. health. Uh, you know, that's one of my biggest goals. I really get into, you know, like the, the foot nurse that has to go door to door. And, Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, in the communities where a lot of nurses don't want to go off. I had this horrible job, and at the same time, I started getting closer and closer to Stanley, the guy I was going with at the time. He was a sheet metal worker, I was an <laughs> office worker, and we just got along fine. I would go to work, run home, cook his dinner, and be with him. I mean, I loved him so much, I loved him more than I, like, loved myself. And so it didn't work out. When we first broke up, it was crazy. I was crazy because I didn't know what to do. Here I was, alone. But I had to do something drastically different. I don't know how my thinking went at that time, but I find myself wanting to do something else, desperate to do something else. So I quit my job. I started working part-time. I started going to school, never knowing how I was going to pay my rent, never knowing what was going to happen. 
you know, I realize that, you know, it's a long road ahead, but now I sort of like have a sense of myself. Sometimes I, when I feel depressed and beaten down, I have to remember that, like, you know, things aren't that bad, and I'm only 22, so. These are my favorite pair of shoes. Well, they're my latest. They don't look very practical, but they are. I can, I can dance in these, which is, like, really, really good. And I think they really look nice on, especially, like, with a long skirt. They just make your legs look really nice. And I like that. I don't know. People say, oh, my God, how can you walk in these things? But I can. Okay. These are the most practical pair of shoes I have. But a friend said to me that I have the worst taste in shoes. She thought these were the worst, the ugliest things she's ever seen in her life. But I like them. They're really comfortable. They haven't always have a shine on them. You know, instant shine. You know, I've never did, done anything to them. Okay. These are my favorite summer shoes. I really like these. I, I like to wear brown in the summer. They're really scuffed up, but they're really, I like them. These are my Vermont shoes. I had to get, I wore a pair of platforms to Vermont one time, and a friend says, Alba, you've got to get another pair of shoes, practical. You know, I was stumbling, falling, my ankles were twisting. So I got these, and these are, I only wear them in Vermont during very bad weather. You know, I, I like to be high, you know, like I'm short, so. And these are my old faithfuls. They're not shoes, but um, we've had a time in these, me and my feet. I don't know. That's, you know, others are summers. You know, I don't. I have a lot of shoes, but I don't wear them all. And it seems like I never have um, enough shoes when I want to go out. I never have the right shoes to wear because, like, I like to like match things. And I don't know. But it's my shoes. Here I am again, back downtown, but it's um, a different kind of office building. It's the University of Massachusetts. It's a state-run school. I'm in the College of Public and Community Services, and I'm specializing in media. I'm paying for it through scholarships and loans and a part-time job. You know, a lot of attitudes are perpetuated. As BC said, there's, there's sexist attitudes that are, that are perpetuated. Now they're changing some of the advertising, you know, like, uh, and then now that it's, I've got a PhD in biology, but my children have to have Tang. <laughs> you know, it's a little different attitude, but it's, you know, I mean, you figure they're going to change a little bit because of the attitude changes among women. Right now I have a job with the social research group, and it's, it's really good for me because for the first time I'm being paid for something I really enjoy. Alvy, tell me about why you're here and what you want to find out about. Okay, I'm from the Boston Women's Collective and we were funded to do a study to see what kinds of social services there are in Massachusetts for girls between the ages of 10 and 18. And I have a greater Boston area, and I'm trying to go to as many different agencies as I can and see what these agencies are offering, what their priorities are, and also what can I do, you know, how can I, you know, affect somebody. You know, you know what yeah. we talked about having ready. Yeah, I don't, I don't, ha I don't have it now. So Just I'll talk about oh, okay. Talk yeah, first I want to talk about my mistakes, which I've had great many of, uh, which was trusting people with this questionnaire. You know, um, a lot of people didn't have that much time, so what we did mostly was talk. And I left my questionnaire with them, and they were going to send it back to me the next day or the next week. Well, since um, the beginning of December, I've been chasing people, pleading with people, you know, to give them back. I have to go. I've been to one agency three times already, and I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, people, you know, love, you know, they love to touch you, but I think what I have to start doing is getting the questionnaire back, you know, you know, as soon as I do the interview. Do you have some completed questionnaire? Yeah, or I, pretty much. Yeah, completed? pretty much completed. And what I was mainly interested in, like, as you all know in the start is like minorities and stuff and so I've been like trying to focus on places that um, especially cater to like black and now that you, you know gave me that other list Spanish speaking and seeing what's available for them. I'm interested in the work that the collective does but I don't feel as though I can really be a part of the group. It's like being in Vermont all over again. Most of the women in the collective are married and they're supported by their husbands and they live in suburbia. Jerome, what did you do in school today? Other than nothing. 
they knew who I was. My mother was crushed, you know, when I first dropped out of school. But she stuck by me. You know, and I, you know, I look at her. She's got a job working at City Hall, you know, she's the executive director of Civic Unity. And, um, you know, which is, it, it's a, a place where she becomes like the liaison between the community and City Hall. It involves doing, a, you know, a lot of talking, which uh, <laughs> she loves just like myself. I mean, you know, uh, never, never. She's on the phone, of course. Okay, fine. I thought everybody would be talking back Wednesday. Okay. okay, fine. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Corey. Hi. 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 You came to see Nana today? You want to give me a kiss? Come on, come give me a kiss. Come on. I'll let it out. Come on. Let's see Nana. Oh, here we go. You got your team? Okay. Hi, girl. No, I'll see if I get something over there. Oh, here we go. She's afraid that she's not. Look, look at Nana. She's afraid she's not going to be able to go back out again. She does this when she gets... Look, watch, 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 watch it stop. Here. Just like a machine you are, as long as you're eating all the time. One day, I was kind of feeling sorry for myself. I think I just about had it. And I know this happens to all women at some time, and I decided that you know, the kids were a good size now, and all of them were in school. And I just felt, I said to my husband one evening, I said to him, you know, I think I'd like to get a job, but I won't go in the daytime because I feel I'm needed at home when the kids come home, but I'd like to go in the evening when you can be home. <laughs> and he said, what? No, I don't want you to go to work. You stay home. And I, and I said to him, well, you know, it's very hard trying to make ends meet because we didn't have too much money on one day. And uh, he said, uh, and besides, who was going to hire you anyway? Now, after all, the time you've been home, you you wouldn't be able to get a job at all. So this became a challenge to me. And I, got, I became so furious that I got the newspaper the next day and I started looking through the paper. And I, had, I didn't care what kind of a job it was, just a matter of getting out. As long as it was an evening job, when I felt that the kids would most, most of the time, they would be going to bed soon and he would be home. So however, I noticed this uh, ad in the paper that said they, they were hiring packets for this Eastern Baking Company and it wasn't too far from here. And I thought, oh gee, that's great, I can mm -hmm. walk to that. So when my daughter came home from school, my oldest daughter, I said to her, you know, I'm going to go, and all the kids were in, I said, I'm going to go down and see about a job. They looked at me like I was crazy. They said, a job, Mama, and they started to laugh. They were as bad as their father, because they didn't really, you know, really, that made me even angry, because they didn't believe me. So, however, I went down to, this was in, oh, I guess it was about a little after 2, 3 o'clock, I went down to this baking company for an interview, and I couldn't believe it. The man said, you're hired. Can you come back to work at 4.30? He said, 4.30, it only gives me about an hour. He said, we could use you today, come back. So I said, well, I, so I flew back home. As I said, I could walk to it. And I came in the house and ran around like crazy and had my oldest girl get the food together. I said, oh, my husband will die when he comes home and doesn't find me. But oh, this is gonna be great because he didn't, doesn't believe I could get a job. And however, I did go to work that night. We worked in the evening so about, I think we worked until 10, yes, didn't we? I think we started the same night. I think oh, it was my first night, too. Oh, my, yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. And for the same reasons, <laughs> identical. I went, <laughs> we could use the money, and I wanted to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. The only thing, it was so, I don't take heat, and it, it really it took an terrible. awful lot to stay there. Yeah, it was terrible. And then one night, my dear friend oh, here decided to move the fan. We had a stand-up electric fan, mm -hmm. and it toppled over and broke. Mm -hmm. So they decided that they wouldn't replace it. So we issued an ultimatum that without a fan, <laughs> we wouldn't <laughs> work. And guess what? They took us up on it. <laughs> then we came back the next day, our cars were up. We <laughs> were in shock. And I've never been fired in my life. I <laughs> and I mean, this was really it's too very much. We never got oh, fired. It was serious. Let's go. Right? Yeah, it was like, because I was I telling you, I was trying to yeah. say the intruders, uh -huh. but it's not the no, intruders, no, it's know. the, uh, right. yeah, I hey, know. look, okay. Dustin Hoffman, Lynn, did you like the play? It was okay, it wasn't that good. Well, look, Whatever man is in my life at the moment, that's the kind of man my sister Cora wants. Um, when I was with Stanley, Cora wanted to marry a sheet metal worker. When she saw BC, she wanted somebody that goes to college. Her and her friends sort of keep an eye on me. Fifteen, sixteen, 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 sixteen
She's going to be a doctor. PhD. Right, you're going to be. A, oh, what do you want to be, Dempsey? Um, a psychiatrist. Really? <laughs> Why do you want to be a psychiatrist? Because my uncle's going to be one. Oh. Well, how many kids do you want, Cora? I don't want kids. I want cats. You want cats? Yeah. Why not kids? Don't you want to have four kids like mine? No, I want to have twins. And I want to get me a nice straw hat to yeah. go up my nice straw shoes, and I, I want to look like straw. No, I, w I really want to get something. Easter? Yeah. No, Easter. I don't buy it for Easter anymore. Yeah. No, I want to get a nice straw hat because I got some nice straw shoes. I want to be the new me. I'm going to get a cut. Yeah, you get a shake, right? I want to cut and shake. Yeah. See, if it was cut close, it would just probably be naturally curly. You're going to come every anything week? Anything for me. I love it, <laughs> love it, love it. I'm going to have to do it myself. You love it, love it, love it? Yeah. Feels good. All right. What you've been talking about, the brand new you, I guess you're going to have it. Yeah, sure. Maybe I'll be the new man, too. <laughs> <laughs> Rejected by a horse, get through. <laughs> Rejected by a horse. Uh oh, uh oh. Bye bye. Bye now, Phil. You know, Kurt's come into my life now, and um, he came in at a time when I needed someone. You know, I, I needed that male friendship. When you're a kid, every story ends with going off into the sunset and living happily ever after. But you know, what? It, what is it? What is going off into the sunset or living happily ever after? Good night. Good night. Oh, I don't get a kiss? No. <laughs> no. No? Down. Down? Oh, uh, you can kiss me on my cheek. Get down! Oh, you can kiss me on my cheek. No! You may kiss my hand. Come on, I'll kiss your hand. I'll make it off. Oh, you're too big to give me a kiss? <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Get down! All right. Okay, Now i got to find him. Good night. <laughs> 